Major government-owned infrastructure projects will go through a rigorous selection process before they can be funded through borrowing. Deputy Prime Minister Heng Suiket says this in Parliament. He was responding to questions about safeguards to ensure sustainable spending under a bill that was passed today. Heidi Ng with more. Major infrastructure such as the Cross Island Line could be paid for through borrowing under the Significant Infrastructure Government Loan Act, or SINGA. Only projects that cost at least $4 billion, excluding costs like maintenance and land acquisition, are eligible. They should also have a useful lifespan of at least 50 years. Other criteria include government ownership and having benefits for the nation and public. To prevent excessive burden on future generations, loans raised under Singa cannot exceed $90 billion. Borrowing is also limited by the interest cost threshold of $5 billion per annum, which works out to an effective interest rate of 5.5%. But some MPs raise concerns over whether there are sufficient safeguards to ensure prudent spending. I call on the government to put in place a Singa evaluation panel to include independent expert panels to ensure all projects funded under Singa are highly selective robustly assessed against the qualifying criteria provided under the bill. There should be also cost-benefit analysis to justify the expenditure. Mr Heng says all development projects will undergo a review by the Finance Ministry as well as an advisory panel, which will also ensure cost estimates are reasonable. And Parliament will continue to play a vital role. All infrastructure to be financed by borrowings will form part of our development expenditures to be approved through the annual budget process. Parliament may carefully scrutinise our proposed infrastructure plans. Any supply bill passed by Parliament has to be assented to by the elected president. And there will also be safeguards to ensure future generations don't foot the bill for what they can't really use. We intend to cap the depreciation period for the assets at either 50 or 70 years rounded down from its useful life. This reduces the risk of future generations having to pay for an infrastructure that is becoming functionally obsolete towards the tail end of its useful life. Mr Heng also responded to concerns raised about the risk and costs involved if projects financed under Singer are aborted. If a, the government has started borrowing uh, for and constructing a project, it has no incentive to abandon any meritorious projects. Because doing so comes with both tangible costs such as demolition costs that will be charged to the term of government that abandons the project, as well as intangible costs such as reputational costs. We have to do our best to put in place the measures to minimise the risk and should this risk materialise, to have proper recourse. Mr Heng added that even with borrowing, there will still be a need to raise the goods and services tax. That's as spending for costs like healthcare will continue to rise as the population ages.